I was reviewing uh, Hillary Clinton's speech at George Washington University on St. Patrick's Day and discovered that uh, she had claimed to have arrived in Bosnia under sniper fire. I remember landing under sniper fire. There was no greeting ceremony, and we basically were told to run to our cars. Now that is what happened. Uh, I was watching the news back in 1996 when she made this trip, uh, and I thought if the First Lady had come under sniper fire, somebody would have mentioned it somewhere. First Lady Hillary Clinton is in Bosnia this morning, touring U.S. bases and visiting American troops on the front lines of the peacekeeping mission. Mrs. Clinton's first stop is Tuzla, headquarters for the U.S. operation. Cheryl Ackeson is traveling with Mrs. Clinton. Bosnia's acting president greeted Hillary Clinton and her daughter Chelsea in Tuzla this morning. So did an eight-year-old Bosnian girl who was four when the civil war broke out in her country and says she can't remember a time before it. So I did a nexus search, looked around a little bit and found that the coverage of the time made no mention whatsoever of the First Lady being shot at when she went to Bosnia. Uh, so I wrote up a, an item for our Newsbusters blog and then went to the uh, video archives to grab one of the tapes from that uh, time period to take a picture. Well, it wasn't picked up right away, which is kind of funny too. Fox News Special Report did pick it up the next night, which would be the Wednesday. Uh, two days after she gave this speech, and they ran the still shots that we had. The controversy continues over whether Hillary Clinton, as she said again this week, had to duck sniper fire while arriving in Bosnia back in 1996. The committee in Sinbad, who was with her, has ridiculed the idea, but the Clinton camp has said he was just being funny. Now, though, the Media Research Center has scanned the coverage at the time by reporters who were on the trip and found no mention of any shooting. The CBS report even showed her arriving in Bosnia smiling and walking alongside daughter Chelsea. Senator Clinton had claimed there was no greeting ceremony and, quote, we just ran with our heads down. But the network picture showed her being greeted by the acting president of Bosnia and a group of Bosnian children. So the, the story was out there for all the national press to see. But for whatever reason, most in the press did not pick this up until the weekend, which happened to be Easter weekend. The Washington Post that Saturday ran a little truth check and gave her four Pinocchios for telling a whopper. Uh, referring back to the actual news footage that we had put into play. This, this video really went viral. I mean, it was picked up on YouTube. Uh, you know, people grabbed our video, made their own parody videos of it. Uh, they added extra fake explosions. They juxtaposed Hillary's press statement with Hillary's arrival. I mean, this was something where YouTube took our archive news footage and really made this presidential candidate into a laughingstock. It was, it, was, it was interesting to see it go so viral, and it was something she had to answer for. I mean, she had to stand up there as a presidential candidate uh, the Monday after all of this happened and say she was wrong. Uh, you know, that, that, is, that is quite an impact to have when you're a, a little blog like we are. I mean, it really, it really made a, a, it was one of the footprint moments of uh, the 2008 campaign, and we had a role in it. So it was August of uh, 2009, and this was about the time that uh, it was during the uh, Congress's recess, uh, Obamacare was being fiercely debated, you started having the town hall meetings, um, and a lot of protests against Obamacare and just against President Obama's agenda in general. And so a lot of the media were, were starting to become very critical of any, any uh, uh, people who would come out and protest the president or criticize his agenda. The president went to go give a speech in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, a bunch of uh, protesters um, uh, gathered outside of that, uh, that venue where he was speaking, and some of them uh, showed up with uh, firearms uh, that they had on, uh, that they, just to show their uh, uh, support of the Second Amendment. And um, a lot of the media were starting to uh, uh, take the line that uh, if you were opposed to uh, President Obama or any part of his agenda, then you must have some, you must, uh, have some racial bias, um, must be a racially motivated uh, reason why you're uh, opposing him. They showed uh, the protesters, uh, some of them with, with uh, guns, 
uh, and they focused in on one in particular who had a, he had a pistol and a holster strapped to his hip and he also had a, uh, a semi-automatic rifle over his shoulder and they, they focused in on him and uh, the anchor Contessa Brewer specifically cited him and then went to talk about how um, you know all these white uh, protesters who own guns who are showing up at these rallies um, they must have a problem with a black president. They're, they must have. They must be uh, racist in some way. People feel like, yes, there are Second Amendment rights for sure, but also there are questions about whether this has a racial overtones. I mean, here you have a man of color in the presidency and white people showing up with guns strapped to their waist. I realized that the pro, the individual they were focused on, um, that she was describing, I had seen in some other footage that that had been shown on other networks. And I, I could have sworn that he was African American. And so I went and, and did some research and uh, discovered that that was the case. One uh, article I found was from a, a local paper in Arizona, in Phoenix, uh, the Arizona Republic. They actually had a picture of the man, uh, a full picture, showing that he was in fact black. MSNBC uh, had simply cropped the, the video footage in such a way that you could not see the man's skin color at all. You saw the white shirt that he was wearing and, and, and the slacks he was wearing and the guns, but beyond that you could not tell you know, what his skin color was or who he was at all. I was shocked by this and, and I quickly uh, uh, wrote up a blog post for Newsbusters and, and got it up. And there was quite a bit of fallout from it. Uh, the Second Amendment Foundation uh, released a statement condemning MSNBC for falsifying the footage and trying to smear uh, uh, gun owners in the country. And um, Politico uh, picked it up on their website as well. And uh, to the point where they actually uh, forced MSNBC to respond to it, to, to the falsified footage. Another organization, Americans for Limited Government, went even further calling for the firing of whoever at MSNBC was responsible for this uh, falsely uh, edited footage. So, I mean, it definitely had a, a wide-ranging uh, uh, impact and really just was a, just a classic example of uh, how the media can just go to the point where, I mean, if they have a story that they want to push, uh, they will make the facts fit that, uh, that uh, storyline no matter what. Even if they're not the facts, they'll, they'll create facts uh, to, to fit a story as long as it's pushing uh, the, the agenda that they want to push.